This is the Baofeng UV5R handheld ham radio. You can get one of these for under $30. That has made it one of the most popular ham radios of all time. And because it's so popular, because there's so many of them out in the market, there are a ton of accessories you can buy for this radio. And today on this video, I'm gonna tell you my list of the top seven accessories you should have for your Baofeng. Let's get going. Today, I'm in my backyard. I had a lot of accessories to carry. I didn't want to lug them to a park or a mountain or a hill or somewhere else, so I just dragged them out to my backyard. We're gonna be doing the top seven list right from here. So let's get started with number seven on the list. While it's number seven, it really should be number one. I just wanted to talk about it first because it's not really an option. If you're gonna have a Baofeng UV5R, in the United States, you pretty much have to have one of these, and that is a amateur radio license. I keep mine in my wallet. There it is. Now, the amateur radio license is issued by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, and it requires a test, and the test is simple. In fact, it's so simple, children pass it all the time. The test is 35 multiple choice questions and you only have to get 26 right. There's a pool of about 428 questions and if you want to study, all the questions and answers are published online. There's lots and lots of books, tools, YouTube videos, online resources to help you learn the material, study for your test, and pass it. Once you pass the test, the license is good for 10 years. If you want to find out where a test is happening in your area, you can go online. A simple web search will tell you where there's a test happening in your area. And the test can cost anywhere from $0 up to about $15. So you could be into the ham radio hobby for less than $50. It's really amazing. It was never like this before. Uh, the advent of, of inexpensive handheld ham radios has really made it easier than ever before. So study take your test and pass it. If you've read online somewhere that you can use a Baofeng without a license, it's absolutely false. Other than the amateur radio service, there's really only two others. The family radio service FM, uh, FRS, which are those small walkie talkies you can buy at Walmart or Best Buy. Those have to be type certified, have non-removable antennas and can't be programmed outside of the specific channels they use. The Baofeng UV5R doesn't qualify for that. And the GMRS, General Mobile Radio Service, also requires a license and type certified radios. So the Baofeng doesn't qualify for that. So if you've read somewhere that you can use the Baofeng in the United States without a license, it's absolutely false. Take the test, it's easy, pass it and get your license. Here's a ham radio in action pro tip just for you. When you get your first technician's license, the FCC is gonna assign you a call sign. It's gonna be two letters, a number, and then three more letters. My first call sign was KM4VGM, and I didn't like it that much. Well, here's the tip. You can get a vanity call sign for no charge. You can apply to the FCC, you can pick your own call sign. And as a technician, you can get one letter, one number, and then three more letters, so it's shorter. My new call sign is K4BBL. Much shorter, it's something I can remember. I liked it because I picked it. So when you get that first license, go out and get your vanity call sign right away. Why not? It's free, it only takes about 18 days and you can use the assigned call sign while you're waiting for the new one. Go ahead and do it. We are up to number six and the number six accessory you should have for your Baofeng radio. When you buy your radio, it comes with this, a charging cradle and a wall wart. This is what you use to charge your radio and it works great as long as your house has power and you have an outlet to plug this into. But what if you don't have an outlet? What if you don't have power and your radio needs a charge? Well, that brings us to number six. The number six accessory is this. It's a cable that plugs into the cradle and has USB. You can use USB power to charge your radio. Plug it into the back of the cradle, plug it into a USB power source like this solar panel and it will charge, but today's a low light condition. I don't have a lot of sunlight, it's overcast. Or if it's at night, 
Well, what you can add to the panel is this controller and this 12 volt battery. Now with this, you can plug it in to the USB. Always get it wrong on the first try. You can see I have power at the cradle and when I plug in the radio, it's charging. Now what's happening is I'm charging off the battery and as soon as the sun comes back, the solar panel will charge the battery as it's charging the radio. So get yourself a USB to the Baofeng cradle cable and you'll be able to solar charge your radio. The whole setup, the panel, the controller, and the battery cost me around $200. I can also power my other handheld radios as well as my portable HF radio using this same setup. It's really flexible. It's a great thing to have in case of emergency. We are up to number five, and the number five accessory you should have for your Baofeng UV5R is this. It's an APRS cable like this one, and it allows you to connect your radio to a phone, laptop, or computer to decode APRS packets. APRS is the Automatic Packet Reporting System, and it is a really cool part of ham radio. Tune your radio to 144.390, and you're gonna hear packets coming in. But to decode those, you're gonna need an APRS client on your tablet, like this iPad, your phone, or your computer. Now, there is a ton you can do with APRS. Too much to get into in this video, but let's just say you can get local weather, see other hams in your area on a map, get information about local repeaters, send messages to other hams, send SMS text messages, send email, and much, much more. Now you can decode packets coming in on the radio just using the speaker here and the microphone here, but using a cable will give you more packets. It's cleaner audio and you'll decode more packets. Definitely recommend you get an APRS cable, learn about APRS, it adds a whole new dimension, a digital dimension to ham radio. We are up to number four, and the number four accessory you should have for your Baofeng UV5R radio is this, a roll-up J-pole antenna. Now, a J-pole antenna is a very common design. It works on two meters and 70 centimeters. You can make it out of a bunch of material. Common ones are copper piping and this. This is made of coax and ladder line. You can see it's super light, super portable, and you can hang it from anything trees, balconies, decks, you can hang it off railings, doesn't matter. It's super flexible. You extend it, it's about, I don't know, three feet long, maybe. You hang this from a tree or anything at all, and it will definitely extend the range of your Baofeng. Now you can buy these, I bought this one, or you can make them as well. So get yourself a roll up J-pole antenna, keep it in your bag, it extends the range, super light, super portable. We are up to number three, and the number three accessory you should have for your Baofeng UV5R is a homemade antenna. Building and experimenting are a cornerstone of the ham radio hobby, and there are lots and lots of designs online and in books that you can use to build your own antenna. It will help you learn about antenna theory. It will also help you learn about some of the math behind the physics of antennas, and it'll give you a great sense of self-satisfaction when you build an antenna, use it, and it works. I have built this. This is a two meter ground plane antenna. It uses a connector and some metal coat hangers. I've used this, it works great. I've also built a handheld directional Yagi antenna for working satellites, and I've built a few more antennas, including dipoles. So I definitely think you should build an antenna for your Baofeng. It will be great and it saves you some money too. This whole antenna to work two meters cost me well under $10. The number two accessory you should have for your Baofeng UV5R is an upgraded whip antenna. Now, the whip antenna that the Baofeng comes with, it works, it does work, but you can get a serious upgrade in range for not a lot of money. But you have to be careful of counterfeits because the Baofeng is so popular, a lot of auction sites and some sketchy retailers sell counterfeit antennas. Now, if you buy your antenna from a reputable ham radio dealer, either online or in person, you can get something like this diamond 
and know that it's authentic and not a knockoff. A knockoff could give you no increase in range whatsoever, or maybe even if it's so poorly built, damage your radio. You don't want that. One whip that I can highly recommend is this. This is the Signal Stick Super Elastic. Let me show you. Not only is it dual band, and it works great as a dual band antenna, but it can do something no other antenna can do. Watch. Look at that, and if you're like me and you keep your Baofeng in your glove box or in a bag, this is really handy. And then you just take it apart and it's back to normal. It has a lifetime guarantee. It's a great antenna. I'll put a link to it down in the description. So the number two accessory you should have is an upgraded whip, an increase in performance for not a lot of money. We are finally at number one. The number one accessory you should have for your Baofeng UV5R is a programming cable. That's right. In order to connect your radio to your computer, you're going to need a programming cable. Now you can program the UV5R through the keypad, but let me tell you, it's tedious and it's not that easy. If you're going on a road trip and you want to program repeaters on your route and at your destination, you definitely want a programming cable, even just to program in the local repeaters. But another word of warning, there's knockoffs of these cables. Can you believe it? There absolutely are. The cheapest ones have a knockoff chip right here. And the knockoff chip isn't going to have a real driver. And the people who make the real chips make the drivers, so they're constantly in a battle. And if you buy a knockoff cable with a knockoff chip, you are gonna pull your hair out trying to get your radio connected to your computer. So spend the extra few dollars, do your research, make sure you're buying an authentic programming cable with good drivers that you know will work when you plug your radio into your computer. That's it. That's the top seven accessories you should have for your Baofeng UV5R. Did I miss something? Did I forget something? Do you think I got it out of order? Go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. I hope you enjoyed the top seven list of accessories you need for your Baofeng. But since this is the ham radio and action channel and not the sit around and talk about ham radio channel, I'm gonna go ahead and push this little push to talk button, get on my local repeater and see if anyone's around and wants to chat. K4 BBL, is anyone around? Anyone up for a quick QSO? I'm just wrapping up a video. K4 BBL, anyone around? N4OJE, K4BBL, you're a little bit crackly. How's my audio? Yeah, you're getting in really clean. Um, I've got a little mag mount here in the living room. Just sitting on the wood desk, so I have a very poor mount. I need to get that up on the roof. Uh, I just put the things up. Roger that. Yeah, if you got a cookie sheet or a pie plate, something metal, drop that magnetic antenna right in the middle of that and that will uh, serve as a nice ground plane. It should work much better even in your living room. Yeah, give me a second here to stick it up on it. I've got a big metal table here. Uh, give me 30 seconds, hold on. Roger, Roger, I'm gonna, sw I'm gonna sw switch antennas myself. All right, so I swapped antennas. Does my audio sound any better? Yeah, it definitely is a lot cleaner. Did you put it on a pie plate or uh, like a pizza, something, you know, one of those round uh, cookie sheets or something? Yeah, but my first transmission was sitting on a wooden table and uh, now I am mag mounted to a beam uh, that is about uh, six feet long. I just happen to have a piece of angle iron here. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's much better, actually. The audio's coming through. Almost full quieting, a little bit of crackle, but not too bad at all. What kind of radio, radio are you using? 
I've got an ICOM ID5100, uh, so it's got the D-Star on it. So I, I like the little display. Uh, it's just got a one-inch thick uh, remote display, and that's really why I bought it. I, I like that uh, touch screen. That's awesome. I'm using a Baofeng UV5R. It was my first radio. I've got others, but uh, I was just shooting a video on the uh, top top accessories you should have for uh, for a Baofeng. Do you have one? No, a friend of mine bought a Baofeng. Um, I, I went ahead and paid 150 bucks and, and got myself a, a Kenwood, or no, not a Kenwood, uh, a Yaesu FT60R. And uh, I liked that. And as soon as I got the FT60R, they came out with the digital version uh, for the same price. Uh, but mine doesn't have the, what is it, C4 FM? Oh yeah, this the uh, the, the Yezu digital uh, the digital voice option, right? Yeah, that that came out right after I bought my radio, uh, and I so I missed out on that. But I've got D-Star on this one. Boy, they charge you for D-Star. Uh, this little ID fifty one hundred was uh, five hundred dollars or four something four hundred something dollars, and uh, you know that's like two hundred bucks more than any other radio just because it's got D-Star. Roger that. I have the Kenwood D74. That has D-Star, and that was, uh, well, at the time, I paid almost 600 for it. I think they're down to around 500 now. Yeah, this is pricey stuff, and I, I piddle with it. Uh, not as much as I, I really ought to make use of it for the cash. I do have uh, the split receive on this, though. So I've got D-Star on the right, and then I've got this analog on the left uh, so that I can kind of hear both of them and uh, jump back and forth. That's kind of nifty. I do like that. Yeah, it's great for mobile. Are you going to end up putting it in your car, or are you just using it for, uh, like, a home base station? I had this mobile for the last year uh, and a half or something like that, and then I got a job out of town, and I'm running back and forth between here and Huntsville. And uh, so I thought, well, maybe I'll just stick it in the shack, uh, because, you know, changing all the frequencies when you're traveling, and you know, I can't keep up with all the repeaters between here and there. Uh, so I use my little handheld when I'm, I'm there. Uh, so I thought I'd just set this one uh, up with my HF in the house. Uh, so I was just putting the Anderson power poles on it and all that stuff uh, like I should have done when I first bought it. Nice, yeah, power poles make a big difference. I, I did that a while back, put all my stuff onto uh, power poles. In fact, I just showed my solar power setup that I uh, have all connected with the battery and all the loads and everything with power poles. Uh, the name here is Brian, by the way. I didn't get your name. Um, Bra uh, Bravo Radio India Alpha November, Brian. Okay, Brian, uh, name here is Mark. And uh, I used to be on this repeater every single morning on my way to work when I was working here local. And uh, just loved it, had a lot of fun. And uh, you know, talked all the way there and talked all the way back. Uh, I had an hour commute. So it was really nice uh, chatting with everybody. Uh, but uh, now it's been a while, so I thought if I got it sitting up here uh, on the desk, I might be able to talk to my old friends at rush hour uh, if I get a day off. Roger that. Yeah, Mark. Uh, this is, uh, I, I believe this is one of the North Fulton's, uh, North Fulton Amateur Radio League's repeaters. I'm pretty sure it is. But yeah, this one, this one gets quite a bit of traffic. Yeah, I attended the North Fulton meeting uh, just to meet all my friends there uh, once or twice. Uh, but it's a good hour drive for me. I'm over in Powder Springs, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm just on the other side of, of Marietta on the west side. So, uh, But I was driving to Duluth every morning. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I had full coverage from house to work uh, with this repeater. Uh, it's just awesome. I'm, I'm so pleased with the coverage here. Uh, but I understand it's on Sweat Mountain up there in Woodstock, so it's, it's got a good shot. Roger that. Yeah, uh, I'm in downtown Crabapple, which is in Milton. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, uh, kind of west of Alpharetta in that area. Oh, yeah. You've you got great coverage there. Um, yeah, that's right in the middle. Uh, yeah, I, I pick it up right on the fringes here and uh, got there and it was dropping right about the time I got to work. So uh, that last quarter mile or so it worked and, and I was kind of down in a dip. But uh, yeah, where you're at in, in the Alpharetta area, I know, uh, picks up really well. Uh, you're not too far from the North Fulton meetings either, so you, know, you, could, you could attend there. I'm, 
I'm out of town now. I'd make the drive, but uh, during the week I'm in Huntsville. So, and it seems like all the clubs. I mean, the uh, Big Shanty and Atlanta and North Fulton. Everybody meets during the week. Uh, nobody meets on Fridays or Saturdays or you know. So I, I can't attend the meeting. Uh, all my friends are, uh, you know, goofing off on the weekend, so I don't, I don't get to see anybody. Roger, the, yeah, definitely. I'm only a couple miles away from where we meet, and uh, we just had a meeting last Tuesday, and you're right, they're on the weekdays. But, uh, you know, I get to make every other one or, or you know, a couple in a row, uh, usually if I'm in town. So it's not too bad. But, yeah, they should have meetings on the weekends or at least a net, something where we can all get together. Yeah, I kind of miss out on that, Brian. It's been, uh, you know, a bummer. But, uh, I, you know, my daughter was telling me just this weekend, she said, you know, Dad, you ought to go to the uh, meetings there in Huntsville if they meet during the week. She said, uh, maybe I ought to do that. Uh, and I don't know how long I'll be there, but it, it'll be, I guess it'd be fun to do that. Um, just meeting everybody out of town, you know, not the same as being at home. Uh, but I've been out there about 11 months or so. Uh, I, I work as a contractor, and uh, they usually bring me in for spare labor as an engineer. And uh, it typically lasts six to nine months in those places. Uh, but every now and then I get, you know, two years or so. Uh, I think once I've almost hit two years once. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm coming up on it, right? I don't know, I don't know how long uh, they'll keep me here. But, uh, you know, if they do, I, I'm very happy to drive back and forth. Huntsville's a really nice area. N4, so Jake. Roger that, and I bet I bet with Nassau right there in Huntsville, I bet you there are some super smart guys uh, with radio in that club. I bet you guys who have invented stuff for Nassau uh, in radio. That would that would be a, I bet that uh, I bet that club has a lot of brain power. Yeah, and they got a lot of uh, rocket scientists literally in that area, uh, and boy, that's growing too. They've just picked up a few contracts, and uh, they're hiring people and. And uh, they're stealing people from where I'm at. Everybody's getting, you know, 20000 10000 more to quit and go to work for the competitor. Uh, but I'm real happy where I'm at. Uh, and as a contractor, it, it, it's the same way. It doesn't matter where I'm at. My headhunter gets a cut, and then I get whatever's left. And it, it, so all those rates are pretty much the same through, through recruiters. But yeah, I need to hook up with those guys uh, at, at the group there. Uh, they do have one D star in that area, so I, I might. Uh, now that I got Anderson power poles on this, uh, I just put him in the car a week or two ago, so I, I might be able to just run back and forth with this little guy and uh, plug it in and out of the house in the car. Um, so I, I may do that a little bit too. That's why I want to get all the stuff on it. But yeah, I think probably uh, getting involved with the group there would would be a good idea. At least it'll keep me busy instead of sitting in the hotel. Roger that. Yeah, I know how it is, uh, business travel. It can be uh, a drag, and a, a ham radio uh, meeting might definitely break that up. All right, Mark. Well, I'm going to get going. I appreciate you coming back to me. It was nice talking to you, and uh, good luck. By the way, like I said, that, that pie plate, whatever you put your mobile antenna on, worked wonders. Your audio sounds much, much better now. So uh, this is K4BBL. I'll be clear on your final, and thanks again, Mark, for, uh, for getting back to me. Have a great afternoon. Hey, Brian, great talking with you. K4 BBO, this is N4 OJE and Portable and Mom. All right, so that's ham radio in action. You can just dial up the local repeater, ask to talk to someone, and you'll get somebody who shares some interest with you, has some interesting information, and uh, it's always a lot of fun. Thanks for watching the video. If you stuck with it this long, thank you so much. Check out my other videos on the channel. Thanks.